I'm Ruth Langsford. And I'm Eamon Holmes. You can forget that. I always thought we were doing all right, and we have been lucky enough to see our fair share of the glamorous life. But nothing prepared us for this. The million pound watch. I can't imagine spending 20 million on any house. It's amazing. In this series, we're getting up close and personal with the new global superclass. This plane is 60 million US dollars. I'll take one, thank you. We're not talking about the plain old wealthy. We're talking about the new mega rich. If you have five billion and you make 500 million, how do you spend that money? We discover what life's really like. Oh my goodness me. When money is no object. Do you ever find this existence surreal, unbelievable almost? We rub shoulders in high society. And party with the jet set. I don't even mind being seasick. <laughs> As we uncover how the other half lives. What are you up to over here, Mr. Just Holmes? What, Ruth? Think London is absolutely awash with money. We're talking saturated here. It's incredible. Millionaires everywhere. No, 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 no. Billionaires. And it's a fact. London now has more billionaires than any other city in the world. In the last decade alone, more than 100,000 of the world's wealthiest people have moved here. The thing is, everything I read, it's foreign money. So it's yes. Russian oligarchs, it's Nigerians, yes. it's Chinese. Science Chinese, yes. But you go, why there. are they coming? Yeah. Why are they bringing all their money here? Where do they hang out? You don't see them very often. How do they earn it? What do yeah. they do with it? Yeah. Do you know what I think? We should find out. So tonight, we're delving into the lifestyle of those international high rollers. I discover how Africa's richest women spend their money. Champagne. People drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm whisked, jet set style, to a billionaire's home in Russia. How would you clean this? You would need an army of staff. But first, where do we find these elusive foreign billionaires? The answer is to follow the money. The rich may go to Bond Street, but the super rich, well, they like to go somewhere far more, how should I say, expensive. Masterpiece in upmarket Chelsea attracts throngs of the world's wealthiest, from sheikhs and princes to oligarchs and tycoons. We'd never even heard of it, so we had to sneak in to have a look at how they splash their cash. Incidentally, we just borrowed the car so that we'd look the part. Could you park it, my man? You can get everything here. Arts, furniture, design, jewellery, all under one roof. A bit like Ikea for the super rich, really. Ta -da! It's 90,000, including VAT. Right, that's including, including, VAT. That's including that's VAT. VAT. That's right. Last year, it had over £100 million in sales. How much is this one? 82. 82,000. Two discount for me. It's part of a luxury goods market that's grown at a phenomenal rate. That is £30,000. The UK's art market alone is worth a breathtaking £7 billion. Quid. That's almost a quarter of all global sales. So a big chunk of that seven billion has to come from overseas. Those are the facts, but it's still staggering. <gasps> wow. wow. Seeing up close just how much money some people have. Apparently you don't even bother offering anything less than about 10 million. It's hard to take these prices seriously. Nice chair for watching telly. £72,000. Where's the value in this? At 1.85 million. Well, 6,000 hours of work went into creating this piano. And is it unique? So this one's it this is. one? This is a one of a kind, yeah. exactly. I remember that's it. <laughs> One thing's for sure, our concept of money and what it means to be rich today has changed dramatically. What do you think? So, Francois, how, how much would they be? This is something we could discuss when the camera is off. Do you not discuss the price? OK, stop me when I get close. 
100 pounds? No. 1,000 pounds? No. Million. North of a million? North of a million. Higher than a million? More than two million. Can you turn that off, please? Oh. <laughs> So there are things here that are so expensive they won't even tell you the price. If the international super rich are buying all this stuff, just who are they? Emin Agalarov is the heir to a property empire worth more than two and a half billion pounds. His father is the Donald Trump of Russia and owns great chunks of Moscow. But Emin isn't content with being a trust fund playboy. He plays a key role in his father's business. Good morning. Very good Welcome. to see you. Very good to see you. Please, please, see please come in. He's invited us to meet him at London's exclusive Bulgari Hotel, where a suite can cost more than £10,000 a night. Humble abode. A oh, very humble. It's where he calls home when he's in town. And what have you got here? What's included in, in uh, the well, suite? Uh, everything you can imagine, starting from a, a full bar, a library, uh, a steam room. Come, guys, Ooh. I'll show you. <laughs> now, this is what I call a, a wardrobe. So it's a big wardrobe, but it's completely empty because I try to carry as little as I can. Is that all you take? That's all I take. So this is the bar. The okay. nuts are included in the £10,000 room rate. You see, however nice this is, if I was you, why wouldn't I just buy my own place in London? I think buying real estate where you don't live permanently is quite a, uh, a waste of uh, money because you have to service it, fix it, repair it. But you've got money to yes, waste. You've you so that. much but money to waste. It's not about being uh, careful or greedy. It's about being s smart, I guess, about how you spend. So many Russians, Eastern Europeans, especially wealthy ones, seem to congregate in London. They love London. What is it about this place? Why not Paris or New York or Madrid? First of all, uh, English is the common language. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the tax issues, the, the comfort, you know, a lot of Russians fled here that have problems with the Russian government. And uh, it just became, I think, the, the place where people want to reside. Although I think London is, in one hand, uh, on one hand, is overrated because it's very expensive. And I think that's because the richest people gathered in London. Not content with helping run his father's business, Emin has a dream, to be a global pop star. He's had a number one hit back home in Russia and has some very influential fans. You're a winner, you're a champ, you're great at real estate, and boy, can you entertain. Happy birthday, <laughs> Happy birthday, Emin. Now he's come to London to chase international success. But some have suggested he's using his financial clout to achieve it. If the buying public don't see you as having your own journey, as, you know, in rock and roll... Your own story. People, your story, yeah. your adversity, okay. yeah. that maybe for you it's been too easy. To sell out a show for, for five or 10,000 people, uh, of people that actually want to be there, Mm -hmm. is, is you cannot buy that. It's not, your father cannot yes. organize that for you. Yeah. So if, if it happens uh, for me, that, that means I've earned it. I'm staying here in London to find some more big spenders. I'm on my way to Moscow with Emin Agalarov. He's the son of one of the richest men in Russia and we're taking his father's private jet. I want to get under his skin to find out if being a billionaire's son is all it's cracked up to be. Lovely, lovely. Ridiculous weather. Good. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. The jet we're on, by the way, is worth 30 million pounds. When you're the boss's son, you sit in the front, your entourage sits in the back. This is the way. I mean, if we were traveling on a commercial airline, there's all that problem of checking in, queuing up, going through security. It absolutely amazed me how quickly we literally drove on this stormy night to the to foot the plane. of the plane and, and just got on. That's the beauty of uh, private jets. Yeah. But you know, this is owned by the company, which is owned by my father. Yeah. And uh, you know, I always say, it, uh, it's like when you're 35, borrowing your father's car. Mm. My father's car was an Austin Maxi. And unless you stopped at Little Chef, you didn't get a posh dinner served en route. Do you ever find this existence surreal, unbelievable almost? Do you ever have to nip yourself? You know, I don't necessarily need to pinch myself, but it's something to, to always be aware that this is uh, a life that was given to me by my parents. 
and it doesn't matter you come from a wealthy family or not from a wealthy family, the value of money is important in every sense, in every day's decision making. Because if you're unaware of it, your decisions are not properly guided. While Eamon's a mile high on his way to Moscow, I've been in the capital investigating the foreign money that's pouring into London. According to recent reports, it's not just the Russians who are spending big. The Chinese spent half a billion pounds here last year, while the Arab nations spent a cool 888 million. But there's a new uber-rich clan in town. Eamon may think he's mingling with all the billionaires over there in Moscow, but actually he's wrong, because in London now, the Russians have been overtaken by Nigerians. They're flashing all the cash. According to Tatler, every third pound spent in Harrods is now spent by Nigerians. So you have your little Eamon and Eamon bromance over there in Moscow. I'm meeting London's newest super rich. Elizabeth Ison is the top wedding planner for Nigeria's wealthiest. She's in the UK with African media mogul Betty Irabor. I want to find out why London has become the wedding destination of choice for Nigeria's millionaire brides. What about the most expensive, most extravagant wedding that you've been involved with? What kind of, are we talking yeah, millions? Me, I mean, I want figures. I need numbers. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Could go up to 501 million pounds. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so a million's not unusual if, if for very wealthy families to be spending no, on. No. 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 One of the weddings I planned spent about 50,000 pounds on flowers. Just on flowers? Just on flowers. It's a competition, but people want something like Oh wow, you know, mm -hmm. she came down from a plane. Oh wow, she came down from a train or something, you know. So it's always yes. looking for the next spectacular. Yeah, spectacular yeah. 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 The bride wants to look good, she wants to wear the best mm -hmm. of everything, mm -hmm. you know, because more like a competition and you know the elder women want to a make a statement that, oh yes, I want this diamond, you know, yeah. it's better. My and, you know, is bigger bigger. Than yours. You know, I remember <laughs> one of my bride's um, mothers mm -hmm. said to me that my diamond is better than her diamond. Why would she wear that kind of cheap diamond, you know, oh. to her daughter's wedding? So I'm like, okay. <laughs> and these like huge diamonds anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do they have any favorite venues in London? Oh yes, um, the Dorchester is quite popular for weddings, parties, mm -hmm. um, Landmark Hotel, Claridge's, and now the Kensington Palace is, you know, mm -hmm. one of uh, Nigerians favorite now. You gonna mug me? I might gonna mug you. It's that gorgeous award, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download Veeley now. Whilst Ruth gossips with the girls in London, I'm 1,500 miles away with Emin in Moscow's Red Square, and he's keen to show me how different his life is here. He owns mansions in Azerbaijan and New Jersey, but in our west of Moscow is Emin's pad on the Agalarov estate. What? An eye opener. So this is my uh, house. It's quite ridiculous. Now the only person living in this house is, a, is is my housekeeper. Do you ever stay in it? She loves it. Rarely. I only stay here when my kids come. They stay with me. But other than that, it's too big to be alone. In it. You get lonely. <laughs> Emmons house is unbelievable. Well, it's it's not a house. It's a hotel, isn't it? It's <laughs> it's a palace. And my piano. It's the stuff of dreams. It has a reception room the size of a tennis court, and there are seven enormous bedrooms like this one. I've slept in this bedroom maybe 15 <laughs> times. 15 times. <laughs> you could get 15 people into that bed. It's puzzling that the super rich like Emin have places this size and rarely even use them. It's massive. It's a shop. It's not a walk-in closet. It's a shop. You walk in and you walk out. <laughs> it's the size of a shop. A shopping mall. I'm lost. I'm here. And with all the toys you would expect for a multi-billionaire. Clearly, there's been no expense spared in building this palace of a house. My brother's a carpet fitter. My father was a carpet fitter. I know what good carpet is under your feet. That's good carpet. The pool is massive, 450 square meters. Do you need this? I mean, if this was taken away from you, not only I don't need it, I'm actually not using it. It just sits here. How would you clean this? You would need an army of stuff. <laughs> no, actually, when nobody lives here, it's quite easy. You just have to dust it. Yeah. 
Oh, it's a lovely kitchen you have here. It's not the actual kitchen. No? Follow us. What? This is the kitchen. How do you actually reach that fruit? Do you get do you, you get a you get like a stick a stick like a like fishing a, like a selfie thing. stick or a fishing <laughs> stick to sort of try and get down in the middle? I told you it's ridiculous. I'm ashamed of it. Have so. you ever used the cooker? Uh, no, I don't even know where it is. <laughs> I've never used this kitchen either. When I come into this house, I just really wonder: Does he really understand the scale? I have never ever seen anything like this, and I just wonder. Does he really know how rich he is and how privileged he is? Back in London, I'm getting to the bottom of just how much Nigerian brides will spend on their big day. And what would they spend the most money on at a wedding? Champagne. Champagne? Yes. Oh. You find out that you have two to three thousand guests at your traditional wedding, and 80%. 3,000 guests? Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. It's one bottle for one person. Yeah. So Quite you, right, yeah. 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 So. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do what we do and say, start the champagne, then give them Prosecco when no. they've had a few no. glasses. No. no. 3,000 guests, one bottle each? That could be £150,000 on booze alone. But it's not just the wedding itself that costs a bomb, it's the guests' goodie bags too. I'm imagining now I'm a guest at a very important wedding, and I've just found this under my chair. Oh, that's huge. If you're lucky enough, you may find perfume at 345 pounds. Very nice. Cashmere scarves around 350 quid, even a 5,000 pound watch. A watch, thank you very much. Blimey, we're almost at six grand, and we haven't even got to the most important part, the dress. Meanwhile, in Moscow... Do you realise how big this is? This isn't just big. TV won't do this justice. Unless your screen is 72 inches, it's amazing. It's been incredible walking around this house, but why build a place like this and live in it alone? I had an idea. I thought I'm going to have a lot of children. Well, how many people. children? An orphanage? I, no, I, I wanted to have like eight, maybe seven. Well, so eighty. I like, eighty. If I could maybe. afford it. <laughs> yeah. it's, but you could, if you had children, you would only lose them in this house. In 2006, Emin married the daughter of the president of Azerbaijan, and they had two sons. He built this house to be a family home, but in 2015, they divorced. I thought it's like a base, you know, you, your friends come here, you record here, you build a studio, you have a gym, you have a pool, and you have the children, and you have the wife, and I had this vision in my head. Now it's just me, so of course it's out of perspective. Emin's wife now lives with their children in London, and through the playboy bravado, perhaps there's a hint of regret that his dreams of family life never materialised. You have everything, and yet nobody is using this. Is it sadness to you? Is there an emptiness? Not at all. That people are not here enjoying this? No, I, mean, no, no. I built it. It's well preserved, and it's an investment. Think of it. If I ever need the money, I'll just. But who sell it. could have? How much would this be worth? I don't know. Maybe. More than what? five million dollars, <laughs> ten million dollars. Probably twenty, twenty-five. Twenty, twenty-five million dollars. But I, it's not for sale yet. Don't look at me. Yet. I couldn't <laughs> afford it. <laughs> Nigeria's millionaire brides are dealing in some very large sums of money too, especially when it comes to their choice of wedding dress. Only the best will do. With celebrity designers like Ellie Sapp, Tom Ford and Vera Wang topping the list. Buying a dress here isn't cheap, but that doesn't put off millionaire celebrities like Mariah Carey, Kim Kardashian and Ivanka Trump, who all chose a Vera Wang gown. One bespoke wedding dress reportedly sold for almost a million pounds. Oh, wow. How gorgeous. This dress is called Page. The sleeves are designed to cover your fingers in this sort of rather medieval influence and feel to the dress. And the simple lace base to the dress, which has all been over embroidered with the crystals and the pearls and these little loops, these little flower loops that have been made as well. And these are all stitched one by one. We have a, quite a seamless operation. It's very personal, mm. very one-to-one. -one. 
And that's what makes it special. So what kind of price would this Is this one? Depending on what you want done with it and to it and how bespoke you want it made, you can go up to £100,000. Wow. I am super rich Nigerian brides to be. Don't stop at the dress. Eye catching jewels finish the look. And if, like Elizabeth, you have access to huge budgets, the suppliers come to you. How much are they? These ones come in at 475,500. What do you think? Yes, I'll take these. Thank <laughs> you very much. That's <laughs> lovely. That's very nice. kind of you. <laughs> these prices are staggering. I suppose it's good for the economy that all this foreign cash is coming here. But I'm still struggling with this level of indulgence. <laughs> Eamon and I are on the trail of the global super-rich. I'm in Moscow, at home with billionaire business tycoon and pop star Eman Aguilarov. I've poked around his Moscow mansion, which is worth around 25 million pounds. A price tag well out of the league of all but the ultra-rich. But unbelievably, it's just one of 150 other similar properties that Emin and his father's company have built here. Designed in the style of an American country club, it's called the Aguilarov Estate. It's a beautiful resort, 350 hectares of which uh, 70 hectares is this lake that was uh, uh, made artificially uh, and 75 hectares is a golf course. Uh, so half of it is uh, basically a retreat and the other half is, is property for sale. So you have a few restaurants, sporting club, so it's a community. The Aguilarov estate alone is worth over $1 billion. And who, who wants to be in that community? Who lives here? Are these holidaymakers that come here? Are these people who buy into the Aguilar estate? So initially, what happened, you know, in Russia, the first uh, wealthy people would uh, build a huge house surrounded with, uh, you know, big walls, have a lot of security, and live, you know, on their own within the premises they've built. So we decided to offer them the next uh, level where you share the property. There's no fences between the houses, and you can actually, you know, walk around without security here because, the, you know, the the premises is secured. So this is the philosophy behind it. So our customers are the richest, wealthiest uh, people in the country. Just 25 years ago, Russia was still a communist country. Today, it has its own super class. Over 100 billionaires, and many are choosing to live right here. We're now heading to another Aguilarov development, which is known as Crocus City home to three incredibly upmarket shopping malls and in keeping with the Aguilarov obsession with all things American. The complex even includes a mini Times Square. Different, I'll give you that. Lovely, but why? You know, I come here with my, my kids and I want to impress them mm -hmm. at first, for them to go, wow. And, you know, my dad to come in and, and say, wow. And you to come in and say, wow. When it's finished, Crocus City will be the largest slice of property in the hands of any single individual anywhere in the world. But building this massive complex was a huge gamble. You can do this because you guys are often or originally self-funding. You've got your own money, you've got big reserves mm -hmm. of wealth, right? No, no, no. Or you can build this you, place. You can take a lot of the cost and the risk away. Uh, not exactly. You finance it. For example, when this project was built, 35% uh, of the money we put up ourselves. Yes. The rest was, uh, was a loan. But do so you we built it, we finished expecting to start collecting rent. We couldn't. So to save the project, we took a bigger loan to open the stores opened the stores, attracted tenants, yes. eventually sold these stores to the current tenants. How big a risk was that? Well, if, if this would have failed, it would have gone bankrupt. But it didn't. It's only added to his father's portfolio, estimated to be worth more than two and a half billion pounds. But there's a particular drawback to being super rich in Russia. Бегай в ту сторону, посмотри в строящийся концертный зал, как нам лучше пройти. I have noticed um, out of the side of my eye, am I imagining that you are being shadowed? Yes, these are the guys that helped me out. They've been with me for 15 years. So, 
about security. Yes. Emin told me that the cost of his family's personal security runs into many hundreds of thousands of pounds a year. But for him, it's money well spent because there's a growing criminal industry preying on the new super rich. Child kidnapping in Russia is growing every year. And the main target of the gangs is the wealthy. Now, the son of one of Russia's richest people has reportedly been released after it was claimed he'd been kidnapped for ransom. And the richer you are, the bigger the price tag on your head. Where is the threat from for people like yourself? Well, it's Where quite it simple. The only threat is ki kidnapping, which... Uh, and who's that from? Anyone. I mean, it's anyone who, who would know that, you know, a father would probably pay any ransom to get back his child, any father. Yeah. I, and, uh, and a father that has uh, access to to large amount of uh, money is probably uh, his children are, are, are a better target, I guess, for these people. It's something that you probably need to do to keep yourself on the safe side uh, and to keep your parents calm. And, uh, you know, you and my kids... And to keep also. you calm, are you worried about I'm it? I'm not worried, no. Nothing can take me down. <laughs> I think I'm getting to know women, and I can't help but feel he's putting on a bit of a front. Gang crime and kidnappings are an ongoing problem here. The threat is very real. So the Moscow super rich live out their dreams, surrounded by a security team to rival the SAS. And for Emin, there's still one dream that his billions can't buy, his quest to be a global pop star. He's invited me to his next solo gig at a yacht club, leisure centre and concert venue, all owned by him. It's been fascinating living the life of the super rich in Russia. They certainly know how to party. So, at least for tonight, I am going to let my hair down. And what Ruth doesn't know won't bother her, I think. Excuse me, excuse me, forgive me, forgive me. Hello? Yes, darling, yes. Yes, it's me, yeah, yeah. Oh, you would hate it, you would hate it. And the people here, they're all so plain. I'll be going to bed any minute now, yeah? Love you, bye, bye. Anyway, <laughs> that's my daughter. <laughs> I better make the most of this while it lasts, because tomorrow I'm returning to London to report back face to face. Sorry he went to Russia without me because you missed wedding dress shopping and I oh, know how much you love that. I could have spent an afternoon you watching that have, parade. You could have had an afternoon uh -huh. with me. So come on then, how was Russia without me, your little boy's trip? It was impressive, let's put it that way. So how rich are we talking, uh, that, that lifestyle? Off the Richter scale, just okay. like you wouldn't imagine. But as for Emmons House, this place was surreal. This was a house on steroids and with every big house comes a big garage and we're talking super big with super cars to fill it. So with that in mind we're back on the trail of the foreign super rich and where they like to go shopping if they're looking for a top-notch classic set of wheels. Ex-racing driver Joe Macari's London showroom has over 20 million quids worth of them. Now that's the kind of place the billionaires head to. Wow. Wow. Look at this. this is enormous. Now, if you came home with that, I would divorce you. <laughs> if I came home with that, darling, I couldn't get out of it. That would... That's true. <laughs> Rumour has it Joe sold over £20 million worth of cars to foreign buyers last year. We're here to see if he can convince us that they're worth it. This Maserati here is called an MC12. If I am um, writing you the cheque for this today, mm. what's the price on that? One and a half million. And for cash? One and a half million. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bargain. <laughs> OK, time to try some of them out, starting with a late 60s Ferrari Daytona. Though I think... You do know I probably won't be able to get back out again. That would be fine. I'll get the cheque book from Eamon. <laughs> OK, I'm in. How much would it have been new? It would have been under £10,000. 
And how much, if I wanted to buy this from you today? It'd be around £700,000. Buying the car is one thing, affording the insurance might be another. <laughs> Darling, if I had the money, that's the one I would buy you. Would you? How would you in that, though? Gullwing doors. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, and then straight in. <laughs> See, See Marilyn Monroe didn't do it like that, did she? <laughs> it's and graceful then, on the outside, and then Darling. And you're in position, you just flip that back. Just steer wheel back up, and it locks in, and you're away. Oh, blimey. <laughs> It yeah. didn't mean it to buying it that hard. <laughs> How much is he leaning on there? Uh, about three quarters of a million pounds. <laughs> so. Get off. <laughs> Another great investment. Get off. <laughs> Another great investment. Very much What's so, that? Yeah. When you consider the average spend on a new car in Britain now is around £14,000, these prices are staggering. And apparently we're yet to see the really pricey stuff. These are behind ropes, so these must be pretty special. Yeah, these, um, these are sisters. Uh, then that's a 1961 250 California Spider. Now that I get, you see. Mm -hmm. I so get if you came that. home with this, it wouldn't be a divorce. If, well, I think it's quite. I think that's a bit of a girly car to me. Do you? Grace yeah. Kelly. Yes. Scarf. I would be, blowing yes, in the I'd wind. be having my Grace Kelly moment in that. That's well, this beautiful. is. This had a lovely ownership as well. Um, this was James Coburn's car. Was really? it? Yes. Yeah. There were only ever 37 of these cars ever built, so it seems that rarity adds value, but you won't believe how much. All set? All set. $20 million. That is incredible. Look after her, Joe. But more importantly, look after my husband. Of course please. I will. Thank Gone you. Go on then, boys. Sunglasses on. Let's do it in style. See you, babe. Take a photo. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> For an old girl, she still picks up her oh, nose. Oh, yeah, yeah. But enough about Ruth. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you buy this, $20 million, is that the end of your expenditure? What does it cost to keep it on the road? Is it relatively little, or is it, again, a major um, ongoing expense? This car had a, a massive restoration from ground up. It had a quarter of a million pounds spent on it. How much? A quarter of a million. But then what makes it? $20 million. Rarity, supply and demand, probably the prettiest convertible car ever built. Yeah. And reality is if you're a billionaire and you want the most beautiful classic car in the world and it's $20 million, then you pay it. Thank you for giving me the, the satisfaction of riding this. This is obviously the most expensive vehicle I have ever been in or indeed I'm ever likely to be in. Whether if I had the $20 million, I, 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 it's lovely, but I wouldn't pay it. I, really? I can't, honestly, honestly. It's a snip. Actually, Joe's not wrong. Classic cars are a serious investment. They've gone up by 456% in the last 10 years. So the people who can afford them, like Emin, are only getting richer. But to go out and actually enjoy driving something so unfeasibly expensive, I don't know. It's something I just can't get my head around. Do you ever have to lie to wives and they go, how much has my husband oh, just spent on that car? I've got a client who made me used to take the zero off. <laughs> no, no, really. Well, that's not surprising. Don't worry yourself, Ruth. You'd have to take at least three zeros off that price before I'd feel my wallet twitching. But he has got something more in our price range. Just imagine it sounds like a Ferrari. Imagine it is. Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. Thank Bye. you. One thing I learned from my rather surreal trip to Moscow's Millionaire's Row is that being uber rich can make you a target for kidnappers and carjackers. <laughs> To what lengths will vulnerable tycoons and billionaires go to to protect themselves and their families? Would it not be easier to carry a gun? <laughs> Mick Croom spent 15 years in the Met, driving some of the world's most important dignitaries. He now trains people like our billionaire friend Emin, who are targets for kidnappers, <laughs> oh. to drive their way out of trouble. One of those, there we go. I surrender. I surrender, comrade. <laughs> that wasn't funny. That wasn't funny. 
I'd rather have been captured. <laughs> Not only can you hire a driver to protect you and get you out of difficult situations, Correct. you can learn to do this yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and celebs and, and a lot of people want to do this. They do, yeah. Because yeah. it's not just them, it's their families as well. Yeah. 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 My <laughs> wife only worries when I am behind a wheel, not when anything's <laughs> going to happen. But You're quite a slow driver, I think. Oh, that will all change today, darling. Yeah, you see, that's my worry that he might show off today, because I'm always accusing him, so you drive like an old man. Well, we'll find out today, won't we? We will. <laughs> Mick's going to teach us the skills to outmaneuver the bad guys. First up, the J-turn, the quickest way to turn a car 180 degrees. Right, get to 20, come off. Just go one, two, and throw it out the window and let it go. You want it to be gone. Off, throw it, beat it, that's good, beat it. Beat it back, you won't fall out, really good. Oh. Hello, hang on. Look, where are you going, going now? Just right here, it was escaping. Oh, oh sorry. Now, time to put what we've learnt into practice. <laughs> With Mick pretending to be our criminal attacker, have Ruth and I got what it takes to avoid what feels like very real danger. See, I'm trying to respect his vehicle. No, I'm don't respect oh. his. Just get away from him. The trick is to ignore the perpetrator, stay calm, and focus on your driving. Oh. You're going to have to do that funny turn, Rick, quick first. I remember, reverse when it's 20, off the gas, spin, right, in stripe. Right, in good the, in teamwork, the, yeah, well, they good done. teamwork. Like, oh. Wow! <laughs> He's very annoying. Oh, so very bad. annoying. He's coming. Go back, 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 reverse. Ah! Oh, just feel some... Go forward, go forward, go forward. You've seen him off. Oh. Get back. We've won. We've won. Here we go. Ah! Ah! Oh. <laughs> He's coming. I, I hate you. You're not speaking to me then. <laughs> well done. <laughs> you want some? Oh, yeah. No, I'll, I'll stay you over want, here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Road rage. If you are a billionaire and you've got all that money, have you got the enjoyment? Have you got the safety that goes with it? And that's why people hire people like him. Well, I would hate to think that I would have to lead a life where I was surrounded by security, thinking someone was going to jump out and kidnap me or mug me. If you're well-known or very, very wealthy, yeah. then all the time you must be thinking, someone wants to take that from me. Back in central London, our billionaire pop star tycoon, Emin, is back in town again, getting ready for a gig. He's hired Bush Hall, a venue that's often used by record companies to springboard new acts. Oh. Emmons hoping his performance tonight will win over a British audience. But the vast majority of people who've turned up are Russian. There are people that say, oh, you know, he's a rich kid from a rich family. He's just kind of playing at being a pop star. Some uh, people from a rich families, you know, they actually going a wrong way sometimes. I mean, doing a right way, he's supporting his family, he's supporting his business, and at the, at the time, he's singing. He actually have a talent and voice. That's why I like him so much. There are 100,000 Russian expats living in London, and an awful lot of them are Emin fans. With a chance to get close to one of Russia's most eligible billionaire bachelors, maybe they're not just here for the music. There he is. There he is. Oh, the very well, man. So the very well. man. Excellent. Oh. Excellent. He actually... Ooh. Ooh. Right? <laughs> well done. So disgusting. I don't mind if you're disgusting. I'm disgusting, well like beyond disgusting. Ah, oh, well done. Yeah, really good. Good reaction. Yeah. Good crowd. Mm. The Russian girls are very glamorous, aren't they? They are. Very mm. glamorous. We like them. So yeah. what does that feel like when you're up there and you see all those people that have come to see you? Uh, you know, the fact that it's in London, it's additionally exciting because this is, you know, that doesn't happen often too. And you saw some British people showed up. You can't buy them. 
They, you can't buy that. They Your mother can it. buy it for you. Even Amy can dance. We have all the moves. I saw, I saw. He was dancing. I'm the bit of dad dancing. Emin is typical of the new super rich in London. For them, anything seems possible. But what marks him out is his ambition to be a global pop star. So London for Emin is more than a place to shop and have fun. It's where he comes to chase a dream. If effort has anything to do with it, he will get there. You know, getting into the world of the foreign super rich in London has been an absolute revelation to me. Yeah. Do you know what it reminds me of? The Harry Potter films, you know, when you have the wizard world and the muggle world. Yeah. Well, that's what it's like, the, the kind of foreign super rich uh -huh. Uh -huh. and us. It's like there's a secret world that they move around in, different from ours, and you've no idea that it's there. So now you've spent time immersed in a, a billionaire's world, not just millionaires. Would you want that life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>